Hello, welcome to Big Picture Monday. This is Callie Black here with everything you need to know to totally rock this week. Come follow me readings. This is our third and final week in the Psalms. We are assigned to read Psalms 102 to 103, 110, 116 to 119, 127 to 128, 135 to 139, and 146 to 150. Whew! There are 150 Psalms total, so we are reading the last few Psalms here right up to the very end. If you want a general overview of what the Psalms are about, go back and watch my video from two weeks ago, our first week of the Psalms. That's where I tell you what we know about the Psalms, where they came from, what we don't know about the Psalms, <laughs> who wrote them, and some other general terms. So go find the video from our first reading assignment in Psalms two weeks ago if you want to get all caught up on that if you missed that one. This week, I have a couple things that I want to tell you. One <laughs> focused around one very important psalm, and then I'll give you kind of a brief overview of what to expect in the psalms that we're studying this week. Um, just as a reminder, these are likely being written by King David or his son King Solomon, um, but there is a wide uh, time period that these could have come from and a wide variety of authors that these could have come from as well. Um, many of these songs were sung in individual worship or group worship um, and it's just like reading a hymn book. Just like reading a hymn book, we're looking for those words and those phrases that jump out to us. And just as a reminder, I do have a list of all of the current hymns in our hymn book that are inspired by Psalms. And it is longer than most people think. It is not like, here's the 10 hymns. No, there's more than 70. There's a lot. <laughs> um, so if you want that link, head to my website, comefollowmestudy.com, search Psalms. Um, if you're on Instagram, you can click the link in my bio. If you're on YouTube, I'll drop the links in the description below um, so that you can find that list if you want to study it with your family or teach a lesson on that. Okay, there's one Psalm that I want to talk about in particular this week, and that is Psalm 119. If you happen to have your scriptures with you or you can like open this up while you're watching this video, go look, just look, just look at Psalm 119 real quick. Start scrolling through it. And by start scrolling through it, I mean it would take you the whole video to scroll through the whole thing. <laughs> okay, not it's not that long. But Psalm 119 is the longest chapter, chapter, in the entire Bible. In all of scripture. All of scripture. Old Testament, New Testament, every scripture that we have. This is the longest chapter, Psalm 119. <laughs> and as you look through it, you might be like, yeah, first of all, this is long. Second of all, do you notice there's like symbols? What is going on here? I want to explain Psalm 119 to you because it's actually fascinating and pretty simple to understand. I think you're going to totally get it instead of just being like, I don't know what these random Hebrew letters are. I'm just going to keep reading. I think you're going to really find this interesting to figure out what Psalm 119 is about. At least I found this very fascinating. Okay, so if you look at those little divisions, those are Hebrew letters, as I just said. There are 22 of them. Okay, so as you're scrolling through, I read my scriptures on my phone most of the time right now. So as you're scrolling through, you'll see 22 different Hebrew letters as a little subheading that this is divided into. Now, if you took the time to count, every single one of those divisions, those headings, has eight verses in them. Okay, so 22 sections, and then within each of the 22 sections, there are eight verses in each one of those, okay? And just to do the math, that means 176 verses in total. <laughs> That's how long this chapter is in the um, Psalms here, Psalm 119. Now, <laughs> the way that it's formatted is actually fascinating. So each one of those little headings is a letter in the Hebrew alphabet. And it is all the letters. They only had 22 letters in their alphabet. Um, it is all the letters in the Hebrew alphabet in alphabetical order. Psalm 119 is an alphabet acrostic poem. Acrostic poems, if you forgot what those are, I guarantee you made one of these in like elementary school or something. But it's where like you would write your name or some word down the page. So I would write like C-A-L-I, Cali. And then for each letter, I'd be like C, creative, A, 
awesome, L, lovely, I, intelligent, or whatever, right? Like you're, it's the words going down the page or like the first letter of the word um, that is important. And then everything builds off of the first letter of that word. So for a name acrostic poem, it would be spelling your name all the way down. So for an alphabetic acrostic poem, <laughs> here's where we would kind of have to switch our brains a little bit. If you were reading this in the original Hebrew that it was written in, if you looked at that first section, okay, so that first heading and those first eight verses that are in that heading, if you read this in Hebrew, every single one of the eight verses would start with that letter that's at the top of the heading. So there's a letter at the top and then all eight verses start with that letter. And then the next section, we've got a letter at the top and all eight verses in that section start with that letter. Now, switch your brains back to English. The reason why it doesn't look like that to us, of course, is that when you translate those words into English, they don't all begin with the same letter anymore. So think about it as if you, if you were gonna write a poem about God and you put an A at the top and then your first line is, amazing God who I love. And then your second line is awe-inspiring God who created everything. And then your third line is a powerful being, right? So it's eight different phrases, eight different lines. They're verses in Psalm 119, but it's eight different phrases that all start with that same letter if we were in Hebrew. In English, doesn't translate at all because if you were going to translate those phrases I just said into any other language, there's no guarantee they would all start with the same letter in that language. Okay, hopefully that's kind of making sense. So that's what it is. All 22 of the letters are then followed by eight verses that in Hebrew start with that letter. Pretty cool, right? Now the legend goes, we have no proof for this and it's not in our scriptures, but just legend goes is that King David wrote this as an alphabet book for his son, King Solomon, like to teach him the, letter, the letters, just like we would buy our kids an alphabet book. And then to also instill in him the religious lessons that are found within the words of the psalm as well. So that is not substantiated by any sort of means, but it does make sense to me. Like, oh yeah, he would write this for his son as like, here's the alphabet. And also here's a bunch of gospel lessons to teach you about God. Um, he's putting it all together. Okay, now another important thing to know about Psalm 119 is it's not just random teachings about God. In fact, <laughs> there's gonna be some repetition. And one thing that I love is that this is completely focused around the word of God, the word of God, the word of God. Get that into your brain because all, almost all 176 verses, I think there are four verses that are an exception. So almost all 176 verses have the word, word of law or some sort of synonym in that verse. Okay, so here's what I mean. Every single verse that you read is going to have word of God, or here's some synonyms that it could be. It could also be law, testimonies, precepts, statutes, commandments, rules, sayings, or it might just be the word word. Instead of word of God, it might just be word. They're, they're all synonyms, right? They're just meaning like commandments, rules, statutes, the word of God, like his word. This is, you are going to find that in every single, almost every single verse in Psalm 119. Um, so on another level, this is also the psalmist who wrote this teaching that the word of God covers everything from A to Z. It's all encompassing, right? In Hebrew, <laughs> from A to Z in Hebrew, it covers everything. Um, so I think that's cool, like symbolism going along with that. Okay, enough about Psalm 119. It's fascinating. And I hope that gives you a little bit of structure as you go into that, because it is a very structured poem 
all around the same topic and it's alphabetic and it's acrostic. Have fun with Psalm 119. Okay, just like I've done for the past couple weeks, I'm now going to go through each of the Psalms that were assigned for this week and just give you a couple, like a quick summary or a couple things to look out for within each one. All right, let's go. Psalm 102, when we feel despised and forgotten, we can always trust in the Lord. Psalm 103, we should bless the Lord because he always gives us mercy. Skipping to Psalm 110, this is interesting. The Savior will have celestial glory, and there is a priest after the order of Melchizedek who has the same power that Christ has. Very interesting. We have some more context for that, huh? Um, skipping to Psalm 116, this is a super powerful one talking about, I love the Lord, and he loves people who are humble. Psalm 117, praising the Lord for his mercy and his kindness. Now I have to tell you, Psalm 117 is the shortest chapter in the entire Bible. That is just two chapters, two Psalms, chapters away from the longest. Crazy. So Psalm 117 is the shortest chapter in the entire Bible. Um, Psalm 118, the Lord is always on the side of righteousness. Um, he gives us mercy. We can trust in him because he is our strength and our song and our salvation. Um, Psalm 119 is the one that I just told you all about at the beginning, the super long one. So have fun with Psalm 119. Skip to Psalm 127. This was written for Solomon. And you'll see in the heading, it says that it's a song of degrees or a song of steps. And what that means is that people would usually sing this song as they were headed to Jerusalem. So they'd be like with a group of people going back to Jerusalem to go visit the temple there. And they would be singing this song as they traveled to Jerusalem, which is kind of fun. So Psalm 127 talks about um, how children bring the righteous joy. Uh, Psalm 128 is another song of degrees or a song of steps talking about how those who fear the Lord will be blessed. Psalm 135 talks about, let's praise the Lord. Remember that everything is, everything good from him that has come from the past. Like look to history for proof of all the good things that he does and that he's better than any idol they could possibly worship. Um, Psalm 136, the Lord's mercy endures forever. That phrase is said over and over again. I love that one. Um, Psalm 137, this again focuses on history, um, talking about how, God has proven himself. And when the Jews were in captivity in Babylon, they cried and prayed for Jerusalem, which is interesting because we know that a lot of the Psalms were probably written in King David or King Solomon's time, but this talks about the captivity in Jerusalem, which is hundreds of years later. Um, so this one must have been written later and then somehow added to the comp the compilation of psalms here psalm 138 has a joseph smith translation so look out for that um, david is praising the lord in the temple and he's grateful for the strength that he gets from the lord psalm 139 the lord knows all of our actions and our thoughts and david invites the lord to examine his own thoughts um all right skipped to our last chunk here psalm 146 people are happy when they have hope in the Lord and he will right every wrong that happens to us. Psalm 147, we should praise the Lord because he heals everything that is broken and he lifts up the people who are meek. Psalm 148, praise the Lord because he created everything. Psalm 149, praise the Lord through song, dance, and joy. We've just got a lot of happy ones here at the end. And our final Psalm, Psalm 150, talks about praising the Lord for all the good things that he's done. And I love this phrase at the end that everything that has breath should praise the Lord. All right, that is it for the Psalms, our three-week study of the Psalms. Um, my personal focus question for this week is going to be kind of like a summation of the past three weeks in that I want to reflect on how, have, how has studying the Psalms strengthened my testimony of Jesus Christ? And then in particular, like, what are those phrases and those words that stick out to me out of all of the Psalms that we've studied that I feel like I can really latch on to as... This has helped my testimony grow of my Savior, Jesus Christ. Um, really cool experience that we've had these past few weeks studying the Psalms. Have a great week this week doing our last little section here. I hope this video has been helpful. Every comment, like, share, send it in a text to your friends or whatever it is, um, is so much appreciated. All right. Have a great week this week and happy studying.